Hello and welcome to my favorite and most stressful video. If you are new here, hello. My favorite video to make every year is this video. Statistics. I really enjoy maths. I'm... That probably sounds weird, but I do. I don't know what else to say, so let's just get into it. In 2022, I read 92 books, which wasn't exactly what I wanted. I wanted to reach 100, but I didn't, again, second year in a row. Doesn't really matter that much, obviously, um, but it's still kind of like disappointing that I didn't reach my goal, but it's fine. If we look at my past reading years, you will see that it grew exponentially and then it went down a little bit because of last year and now it's gone up a tiny bit. Taking into account all of the books and how many pages they are, I read 32,702 pages. Weird that it's two and two, but whatever. Um, which is slightly more than yet last year. I also read slightly more, so makes sense. Which means that on average, I read 89 pages a day, which is actually kind of incorrect. Okay, it is correct because I did maths, obviously, but I don't read every single day of the year. And lucky for me, or maybe not, I don't know if it's lucky. Because I'm so obsessive with this, I count every single day that I actually read and how much I read each day. I think most people do this. And I read 191 days out of the year, which is kind of like half. It's like 57% or something. Not good, not great, but like, it's usual for me. It's slowly going down. I don't know why, I don't know what's going on. Taking into account that I didn't read the full 365 days, I recalculated the value from before, and it actually gives me 171 pages a day, but only during the days that I actually read, if that makes sense. Which also means that, taking in, again into account all the days that I actually read, it took me 1.9 days to read a singular book, on average. Which is amazing. Um, if I didn't take into account the number of days, it would have been like three or something days for each book, but we're not doing that. Moving on, let's look at the year by each month, I guess. As you can see, the maximum that I read in a singular month was 12 books, hence why each little box is up to 12. Um, and the least that I read was five. And calculating all the months together and doing an average of that, I get around seven and a half books a month. So technically, if we just look at my months, my best reading months are the two months where I read 12 books, which are April and June because I read, again, 12 books. And my worst months would be se September and October because I only read five books. But if we go deeper, because obviously, um, and we look at star ratings and DNFs and stuff like that. My best months are actually the ones where I read the most because I had the most amount of 4.5 and 5 stars in those two months, which is great. I had three in each, I think. And my worst month is just September because I read more 1 stars and 1.5 stars in that month comparing with every other month. So. It's technically correct, but also I like to go a little bit deeper, I guess. Moving on, let's look at my genres. Usually, my top genre of the year is fantasy, but for once in my life, it is not. It is actually romance, because I read 37 books that were in the romantic genre. My second most read genre is obviously fantasy. I read 29 books. And then the other four genres I have are sci-fi, contemporary, mystery or thriller, horror, whatever books, and manga. I separated manga, even though it could be classified into romance or contemporary or whatever, but I just feel like, I don't know, it makes more sense to be separated. The next statistic, I can't say that with my retainer thing, lisp, whatever is whether the books were part of a series or standalone books. As usual, I read more series than standalones. A lot of romance books are actually part of a series, like The Fine Print is book one of the billionaire dreamland boyfriends or whatever they're called. 
Um, and there's a bunch of other ones that are part of like a sibling, like the Talia Hibbert series. They're like siblings and they're a series. I hope that makes sense. More than half of my books were part of the series. Next is rating. This is gonna make me a little bit um, sad. It's, it's made me sad the entire year because I knew it was gonna be low. Um, I don't remember exactly what my average rating was from last year, but this year my average rating is a 3.2. It's extremely low. <laughs> I knew this was gonna happen because I read a lot of books that I did not like. I would say it's mostly because I've been getting arcs and asking for arcs that probably weren't something I would actually get and buy. It's just because I can request them and I go overboard. I still do, I need to stop that. That's like a goal for this year, I need to calm down. But let's look at like the distribution of the ratings, I guess that's the word I'm looking for. I still don't know how to say words sometimes. So there are a few five stars, a couple low ones and 1.5s. My most concentrated is four stars, surprisingly, but there are a bunch of threes, twos, 2.5s, and stuff like that, and not a lot of fives. I don't even have 10 five stars. What is going on? I don't know. I don't have a lot of new favorites. Um, I have a couple, but like, I'm kind of sad. Moving on. <laughs> the next thing we're gonna look at is the target audience of the book, so whether it's middle grade, adult, or YA. I don't differentiate between new adult and adult because I literally don't know the difference. This is gonna be very repetitive, but usually I read more young adult. But, but, big but, I've been slowly migrating towards more adult books, which is evident in my statistics. I sounded very nerdy right now. Whatever. 50 of the books that I read were YA, so more than half, but 40 books were adult. That is not a lot of a difference. It's only 10 books difference. Basically, I'm just still more into YA, but adult is catching up. Maybe next year it's more adult? We'll see. Next year, this year. Next is book size. I will explain this once again. I explain this every year. If I have put a book in the, for example, 300 page place, that means it's from page 300 to 399. And there are some books on here that are 399, but it's still 300 pages. I don't round up, I just care about the first number. We only have one book that is 800 pages, which is Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare. She's over there, I'm not gonna take her out. I technically didn't read the full 800 pages. I only read 400, but we're not gonna care about that. I do take into account that later in the average. Where it's most concentrated, as is probably obvious, is the 300 page section, which I would attribute to the fact that I read so many romance books and they are usually around 300 pages. I, th I feel like that's the norm. So my average is 355 pages, which isn't that bad. And I feel like it's similar to previous years. I'm not sure though, but I will probably leave it on the screen because I'm extra, I don't know. Next, let's talk about authors. First, let's talk about whether I read from them before versus they're new to me. Usually, again, um, I read more from new authors. Um, I don't know why, it just is, um, which again, is true. I read 66 books by new authors and the rest were I had read from before, obviously. That's how it works. I don't know why I'm explaining it. And also, I wanted to see which authors I read the most from. So the two authors that I read the most amount of books from are Rick Riordan and S.T. Abbey. Then in second place, I guess, is Talia Hibbert, which I read three books from. And then in third place are a bunch of different authors because I read a bunch of like duologies or the first two books in a series and stuff like that. And also my favorite authors, I read multiple books. Moving on. We are going to look at whether the book was published this year or backlist or whatever you want to call it. I actually read 35 books that were published in 2022. A lot of them are ARCs, but there are a couple there that I actually bought this year. So that's kind of interesting. And as 
usual, again, this is very repetitive. Um, the most amount of books that I read in a year are usually backlisted because I do buy a lot of books that have come out previously because they're cheaper after a couple of years and I still want to read them and stuff like that. Now we're going to look at where the book came from. It will make sense in a bit if it doesn't right now. Most of the books I already bought and have. 37 of them I had already previously from before 2022 and 19 of them I had bought last year. One book was borrowed from the library, one book was online, and 32 books were ARCs. Which, if we look at the format of the books that I read, most of them are physical, which is 57 out of the 92 that I read, but there were a bunch of ebooks, which include the online book. <laughs> Next is readathons. I usually count what books I read for what readathons. I participated in six different readathons, three magical readathons, two bookoplathons, and Buzzword, which is kind of a readathon, I guess. Technically, that's only three, but I participated. I participated multiple times, so I'm counting it multiple times. I hope that makes sense. And for all of those readathons, I only read 26 books. And speaking of Buzzword, I just wanted to show you the months that I actually completed the prompt, which I'm slowly getting worse at it, but it's okay. Speaking of readathons, I'm going to talk about challenges I did for myself. There are two. First is my tiny unhaul challenge, which I had four books in my unhaul video of last year that I needed to read by the same time this year in order to not unhaul them. I ended up DNFing most of them and unhauling the rest. And then the second challenge was my 22 books to read in 2022. I failed once again because clearly these videos don't work, but we're gonna see which ones that I actually did complete. The Remnant Chronicles, I did not read. Little Women, I'm currently reading. Legendary and Finale, I did read. Battle Royale, I did not. Second First Impressions, I didn't. Daughter of the Pirate King duology, I didn't. Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, I did. Puppy 57, I did not. The Extracted series, I read the first one and the rest I unhauled. A Clash of Kings, I DNF'd. The Nevermore series, I didn't read. Recursion, I didn't read. Spinning Silver, I didn't read. And The Circle, I DNF'd. So yeah, that did not work and that's why I'm not doing that this year. And now the last couple of things are just random facts, I guess. I reread two books, which were The Prince and the Dressmaker and Illuminate. I DNF'd eight books, which are all the ones on the screen. Hated all of them. And lastly, I have not finished one book, which is Little Women. I only read 96 pages of that, which is really bothering me that I didn't finish it in the same year, but it's fine. Those are all my statistics. I've slightly modified them from usual, slightly, very, very little difference, um, but yeah, I hope you find them interesting, I do, I love statistics, don't know why that's something that I like, but it just is. If you have a video like this or a post or a blog or whatever, I'm very interested to see that, so if you want you can leave a link in the comments and I will go look at it because I love statistics. But that is everything for today and I'll see you in my next word video. Bye!